Welcome to the screencast on practicing the chain rule. And by chain rule here, I mean the chain rule for functions of several variables. So this is the typical situation that we have. We're given a function of several variables, so in this case two. And then each of these, each of these variables, x and y, are themselves given as functions of a third variable t. So given this kind of situation, we can form a new function g of t, a real valued function of a, of a single real variable, by composition. So we have f of x of t, y of t. And the question is then, what is the derivative of g with respect to t? This is just an ordinary derivative. g just depends on a single variable and we can ask what its derivative is with respect to, to t. Now one can just form explicitly, we can explicitly form g by uh, substituting. So let's just do this. It'll be sine of x, but x is t squared times cosine of y, but y is t. So I have I formed my function g, and you could then just proceed to differentiate in this case. I won't do it, but uh, you can do it at home. Uh, but in many cases, this will be uh, cumbersome. And in any case, we want to learn to apply the, the chain rule. So rather than explicitly substituting in and forming a single function, we're going to use the chain rule. And I'll just remind you what it is. The chain rule would be, in this case, dg dt is given by we take the partial derivative of f with respect to its first argument, which would be x, and then we differentiate x with respect to its argument, which is t. Then we go to the next, differentiate f with respect to its second argument, which is y, and then differentiate y with respect to t. And in this case, there are no further arguments, and so we're finished. Now, as I've written it here, I've suppressed the function dependence, but I would really want to emphasize that to be, to be cl clear about this, and I'm going to write this over here dg dt is a function of t, and that will be given by df dx. Now df dx, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, is a function of x and y, but x and y themselves are functions of t. So this is df dx at x, y, but x and y are functions of t, so this whole thing becomes now a function of t, and then I multiply by dx dt, which is naturally just a function of t, and then I have to add on, I'll do it down here, df dy, and again, that'll be at x of t, y of t, dy, dt, at t. So I want to emphasize this, that everything on this, uh, this right-hand side here is a function only of t via the composition, and which is good because this derivative of g with respect to t can only be a function of t. Uh, even though I will write the chain rule this way, you should always have in mind an understanding of where the various functions are being evaluated. So with that in mind, let's get started. So dg dt, I'm simply going to plug in here. We have to compute this derivative. So that is, it'll be cosine x, and I will write it out, x of t, and then I simply have cosine of y of t. And then I have to multiply by, by dx dt. dx dt is simply 2t. That, that, that is this term. And now I'm going to run a little bit out of room, but I'll go down a little bit here. Plus df dy. So I have to differentiate this with respect to y, sine of x of t. Derivative of cosine is minus the sine. I'm going to put the minus sign out here of y of t. That's this. And now I have to add on the derivative of y with respect to t, which is simply 1. Oh yeah, I want to substitute. So I'll put the 2t in front. Then I'll have cosine of x of t, but cosine of x of t is simply t squared times the cosine of y of t, which is simply t, minus sine of t squared sine of t. So that then is the answer. And hopefully, it's correct, and hopefully it will be the same as if you simply, in this case, this is a rather simple differentiation problem to do. You could have just differentiated it directly here without using the chain rule explicitly. So now what I want to do is I want to, to do the problem again. It's the same calculation but using different notation, and I just really want to emphasize the, the notational aspect. And the other way I can write the chain rule is dg dt is equal to grad f dot r prime. All right, so this is, let me just emphasize, this is exactly the same chain rule as this. It's exactly the same, simply written in different notation. This will be even clearer if I say what the, remind you what the gradient is. There are only two variables in this case added into r prime, and just to be completely clear, x prime of t means y prime of t, 
is the derivative of y with respect to t. Now I'm not going to expand this out uh, the way I did on, on the previous page, but the sa exactly the same comments hold. That is to say, these partial derivatives here are evaluated at a point x, y, but x and y are functions of t, and thereby these partial derivatives become functions of t only via this composition, and therefore this whole entire expression becomes a function of t. All right, so let's just work it out. Again, it's, it's, it's no different. It's not a different calculation than we previously did. It's just different notation. That is the x partial derivative. I'm now going to do the y partial derivative. Dot, the derivative of x is 2t, and the derivative of y is 1. And then I do the dot product, and I will now make the substitution for x of t is t squared. The substitution for y of t is t minus sine t squared sine t. So hopefully I haven't made any mistakes, and this is identical to what I had on the previous page. So again, in fact, it's worth emphasizing this is not a different formula. It's simply written in a different way, so I have the x and y partial derivatives written together as a gradient, and then I have the derivatives of these component functions written uh, separately, and I take the dot product. But of course, that is exactly the same as this sum. The, the one other thing I'll say is that they're, they're all the same possibly with the exception that you could have more variables. Here I've only had I've only had x and y, but I could have had x, y, z, x, y, z, w, some number of, of, of variables, each of which would be a function of t. If that had been the case, I'll just add it on here, had there been more variables, you simply would have kept going here. You would have had df dz, dz dt. If you had another variable, you could add that on, plus df dw, dw dt and you just have to take partial derivatives and form the sum for as many variables as you have. And, uh, and that's really all there is to the chain rule, and you just practice it.